It was just like any other morning for Lewis and Eric, who were preparing for the day. One got the coffee, one got the Twinkies. They partnered up and protected the streets of LA. Catching crime was their dime, and the streets are full of them. So, when they were dispatched to a robbery and decided to ignore the call, the bosses started asking questions. Chapter 1. What the hell is a Pokemon? It's like a game like eight-year-old kids play, right? Well, Rick, let me tell you. Pokemon... Pokemon! Chum, shut the hell up. Pokemon was the it thing. Every cool kid had them. And if you didn't have any, you were probably the last one to get picked for the kickball team at recess. So, where did these cute fluffy bullshits come from? If you don't fucking attack me right now, I'm gonna fucking flip this fucking table on you, I swear to God. I swear to God, I fucking will. Okay, flip the table. Fine, fuck! Actually, before they became a hit trading card game, Pokemon was created for the Game Boy, and it wasn't even called Pokemon. Oh, what were they called, you asked? Well, they were known as Pocket Monsters, and in 1996, two titles for the Game Boy were released. Nintendo released Pocket Monsters Red and Green on February 27th, 1996 in Japan, and it was an instant hit. Created by Satoshi Tajiri and these dudes, the name Pocket Monsters was later shortened to Pokemon, and of course they didn't stop there. A trading card game was launched in October of 1996 and a badass cartoon on April 1st, 1997. The US wouldn't even get a taste of Pokemon until August of 1998, and boy, did we sure supersize Nintendo's wallet. Up until now, since its start in 1996, the entire Pokemon franchise has made a whopping over 90 billion dollars, Dr. Evil. 100 billion dollars! Thousands of episodes spawned from the series, countless games, numerous movies, mobile games, which we will definitely be touching on, and a craze with trading cards that even Rick Harris can't understand. Well. Let me call a buddy of mine and see if he can explain these cards to you. G.I. Joe? G.I. Joe? Just kidding. I don't even think Logan Paul understands the craze as much as he says he does, but neither do I. Which is why I'm on a mission. A mission to find out the truth. Actually, just a mission to understand and tell a story. To understand why Pokemon is so addicting and how two cops got fired over a Snorlax. Alright. Start the next chapter. Chapter 2. Commercials and our brain. Nowadays, we've got phones that hear what we want and show us ads of things that we need, but back in the day, if you wanted ads, commercials were the place to be. And Pokemon had a lot of them. Let's play. Dance. I can't take it anymore. But Scotch, why bring up commercials? Well, good question. Commercials play a big part in the interest of consumers and a couple of studies have been done on the effects of ads on the brain. So what do ads do to our brains exactly? Well, a lot, actually. So let me explain this to the best of my knowledge, cause boy, is science fucking complicated. Yes, science! So there's this thing called neuromarketing. It's basically how your brain reacts to advertisements and how companies use these studies to seduce customers into buying their products. So why bring this shit up? Well, there are parts of the brain that these advertisements are affecting, and studies have shown that the part of the brain that deals with our emotions and our memories is affected when watching commercials and another part of the brain that deals with rewards, motivations, and addictions is also highly influenced when watching advertisements. And what part of the brain do we use to make all of our decisions? <laughs> our prefrontal cortex. So, if you want something to blame for all of your horrible decisions, <laughs> blame the cortex. 
But how are all these parts of the brain connected with advertisements? It's simple. You see an ad and it makes you feel a certain way, BAM, emotions. You remember an ad from the Super Bowl? BAM, memories. Did you buy that new Kia Sorento? BAM, rewards. Did you send money to starving animals? BAM, motivations. Have you collected all the 1,000 plus Pokemon yet? BAM, addictions. BAM, there you have it like that, all right? Isn't that kind of messed up? Companies study your brain so they can get rich off of you. Chapter 3, The Pokemon Addiction And let me tell you, Pokemon is great at neuromarketing. It's in their catchphrase, you gotta have them all. It's almost like an addiction to crack. Is this a 5 o'clock free crack giveaway? <laughs> I joke, I joke, I kid, I kid, but seriously. Even for the average fan of Pokemon, you do gotta have them all. And if you're the card collecting type of person, these packs. Let me tell you, man, feels like a box of chocolates, Forrest. You never know what you're going to get. All right, so let's say you bought pack after pack and still didn't get that cute little Piccadilly. What would have been the next option? Why, eBay, of course. They've got sellers with reasonable prices for their awesome Piccadillys. Shit, you want a Charizard for your collection? You got to go to this guy. If Logan Paul did it, I got to do it too. He's an inspiration. Wait, let's not forget about the games. I gotta have them all, and there are over 100 of them. Don't worry, eBay's got my back too. Ah, <sighs> so expensive. How depressing. I gotta have another line. And there it was. A world of Pokemon addicts. I'm not gonna lie, these cards are cool as hell, and I'm probably gonna buy a pack one day. Ah, shit. This is what they wanted. The bigwigs of Pokemon knew exactly what they were doing and, in a world of ever-changing technology, they decided to step it up. Literally. Now, if you wanted to catch a Pokemon, you had to walk your happy ass down the road to find them. Not only that, you were glued to your phone and it started causing accidents. So much so, cops started putting up signs warning people not to play while driving. So, for those whose hobby became an addiction, this Pokemon Go thing amped up the situation. Chapter 4 There's a Snorlax in progress. I mean robbery. Los Angeles, California. April 15th, 2017. LAPD officers Louis Lozano and Eric Mitchell were partnered together like Jackie Chan and Chris Tucker. They were assigned to patrol the Crenshaw district and it seemed like it was a busy day for crime. So when Captain Darnell Davenport ignored his homicide call to respond to a backup call for a robbery with multiple suspects at the Crenshaw Mall, he immediately stopped what he was doing and began to head towards the mall before realizing another patrol unit was closer and tucked away in an alley. Why hadn't they responded to the multiple calls for backup, the captain thought. This also felt very strange for Sergeant Jose Gomez, who is Mitchell and Lozano's supervisor. The sergeant noticed they went on a code 6 right before Davenport went on a code 6 to assist with the robbery. So what the hell's a code 6? When a unit is conducting a field investigation and no assistance is anticipated, a code 6 followed by the location shall be broadcast. A unit shall not go code 6 until it arrives at the scene of a call. Units on code 6 status shall remain available for reassignment to priority calls by monitoring their radio frequencies, which is what they didn't do. So why couldn't they assist the other officer? Well, Gomez heard the audio from inside of the police cruiser and the officers went on a code 6 because they didn't want to help the captain. In fact, Lozano can be heard saying that he didn't want to be the captain's help and said screw it to answering the robbery call. But there must have been something more, right? Gomez continued to listen in on the audio recording and literally five minutes after they ignored the robbery call, he would later hear his men in pursuit of another suspect. A more chubbier kind of suspect. Its name? Snorlax. 
I don't know. I don't what the hell is that? You can't make this shit up. They spent the next 20 minutes catching Pokemon. The guys could even be heard saying that their fellow officers wouldn't believe the new Pokemon they had caught. After they snagged the Snorlax, Mitchell told Lozano that a Togetic just popped up. And what did they decide to do? Mitchell would even go on to say that the guys are going to be jealous of the cute little fluffy creatures they just caught. <laughs> Chapter 5. The Counts. The department ended up firing and charging the officers with multiple counts of on-duty misconduct, and I'll read them to you as is. Count 1. Failing to respond to a robbery in progress call. Count 2 making misleading statements to Sergeant Gomez when asked why they did not hear the radio. Count 3. Failing to respond over the radio when their unit was called. Count 4. Failing to handle an assigned radio call. Count 5. Playing Pokemon Go while on patrol in their police vehicle. And Count 6. Making false statements to Detective McClanahan during a complaints investigation. Lozano and Mitchell pleaded guilty to count one and three, but not to the remaining counts. So why didn't they plead guilty to the Pokemon Go count? It was pretty straightforward. Chapter 6 Their Appeal The guys felt wrongdoing on the department's part and decided to file an appeal stating that their discharge was too harsh because they didn't even know they were being recorded in their police cruiser and that the DICVS recording shouldn't have been used as evidence. They would even go on to say that they were only having a conversation about Pokemon Go even though Mitchell could be heard struggling trying to catch the Togetic. January 2022 Louis Lozano and Eric Mitchell lose their appeal and continue to find Pokemon to this day. Just kidding, I really don't know. But that was it. Pokemon had created a beast. <laughs> Chapter 7 The Ending If you made it to the end, then you get a high five from me. It's crazy to think that Pokemon has become what it has become. Back in the day, my classmates and I would trade these cards not knowing how popular the company would become. There really is a Pokeverse out there with dedicated Poke fans, and just like with every other hobby, lies some sort of addiction or fixation. It's up to the consumers to make their best judgment when companies like Pokemon target them with their carefully placed advertisements. As for former officers Lozano and Mitchell, well, I'm pretty sure they knew they messed up and were trying to keep their jobs as much as possible. I do think that their termination was justified as robberies aren't just any old felony and someone could have gotten hurt whether it be a fellow officer or civilians that were at the mall. That one fellas was no excuse and one must learn from their mistakes. Trust me, we all make them. So that's the story. The ever-changing story of Pokemon. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go catch a Squirtle. <laughs>